Have you ever heard a wild goose sail? Get in there, battery. Sail along the ocean. What is... Oh, boy. <laughs> That's crickets. It's not... <laughs> it's not really crickets. Come on, this thing's only 25 years old. Shouldn't it work? All right, whatever. Welcome to the Game of Galleon! Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Game of Galleon! Another adventure out into the Silicon Seas. I am Captain Raz, and today we are going to be having a lot of laughs. Well, maybe some laughs. But we're definitely going to be going on adventure. Uh, and today, uh, I'm really excited about today's adventure because, you know, I, 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 I set the navigator where we're going, and I... Where are we at here? Okay. Um... I set the navigator to where we're going, and it's like I want to launch right away, but I can't do that. I have to wait until the crew gets on board, and, and that's where you come in. So thank you for joining us. Um, we're going to be talking about cars today. I have a little story about a little known tradition uh, at the Indianapolis 500. Uh, we're also going to be playing cars for the PlayStation 2. Uh, you know, a game that you, that you may, um, at first glance, just say, uh, why? Why in God's name? But um, you'll be surprised. There, there's actually more to this than meets the eye. Uh, we've got a booty segment, and I can't even shake it. Look, it's spilling out. There's so much going on here. So that's going to be uh, crazy to try and get through. Uh, if, if these are the kind of problems I have to deal with, I'm in good shape. And uh, we'll also have our mailbag segment here. Okay? So let's get started. Uh, it's going to be a busy hour, but it's going to be a fun one. Um, I want to talk to you about the Indianapolis 500. Uh, I, I've gone to two of them the past couple years uh, because we, we're here. Our home base here is uh, here. In, in, our home port is here in Indianapolis. And as a result, in uh, May... The, the biggest spectacle in racing, that's what they call it, the Indianapolis 500, the greatest spectacle in racing occurs here in town. I'm not a big racing fan. I don't know much about cars. Uh, I, I don't know how to change my own oil. Um, I've, I, I've changed a battery twice in my life, and, and that's about as far as my mechanical uh, inclination goes. Um, luckily, we don't have a motor on the ship. You know, I just have to set the sails where they need to be and, and the wind does the rest. Um, if I was uh, driving a car, we'd be in trouble. So I don't follow racing much, but my father is a big uh, fan. He, he knows how to fix cars and as a result um, is interested in, in the competitive spirit of racing. I think his favorite racing is down in Daytona, but Indianapolis is a lot of fun for him too. And he follows uh, you know, that league is it a league? I don't know. Whatever. The competitions? I, I, I'm sorry. But anyway, he follows this stuff. And when I moved to Indianapolis, it seemed like the natural move to say, you know, let's do a little father-son bonding. Come on down to the city, and we'll go to the race. Well, he's not really into seeing the actual race in person. And the reason for that is he'd rather be at home with, like, you know, some snacks and a drink. And uh, watching it where there's a lot of cameras involved and commentary... Um, getting the meta game of the race, if you will. You can't really do that if you're sitting in a seat and, you know, the, the cars are zooming by, you know, every five minutes and that's all you get. So, um, but he does like to come the day before. So that's what we do. We go to uh, the IMS Speedway the day before, and it's basically a festival, okay? So there are things like, you know, children's rides and um, what else? You know, food. Uh, there's drinks, and uh, some celebrities, I mean, not, not that they're walking around, but they are there, obviously, and attractions, there's a lot of, like, you know, uh, corporate booths that have, you know, they give you, a, give you a bracelet, and if you participate in their weird, you know, little chromo, uh, like, green screen 
pictures and stuff, they'll they'll give you put you in a raffle or give you a shirt. Yeah, I usually walk out of the IMS or Inter Indianapolis Motor Speedway with a shirt um, or something like that. So um, so we're walking around and we find the bathroom and I you know I need to use the facility. So I go in. I say you know I'll be I gotta I gotta use the little pirate's room and he says okay I'm gonna check out these cars these vintage cars that are sitting out parked. I go in and I, you know. It, Men know what, like, a sporting event bathroom is designed like. For you ladies out there, you may not be aware of this, but if you walk into a men's room in a sporting event, there's actually, um, like a cast iron trough, if you will, okay? Um, so you got, <laughs> you've got these guys just shoulder to shoulder, you know, doing what they need to do to continue their day. Right there alongside one another, and you're hearing like you know the metal, you know the metal sound of metal and and liquid. Uh, you know, <laughs> okay, you get the point, all right. There's a trough, and above the trough is what's important. That's what we're talking about. And what happens is people will write things all over this wall, okay? And it's really weird because they'll they'll write you know their name, they'll write the day they were there. The right little sayings, you know, some are appropriate to say here on the ship, some not so important, uh, uh, appropriate. Um, one that stuck out, stuck out to me in particular was, um, this one guy wrote, because it was a white, it was a white background, a white wall. And, uh, and he had, everybody, it was like, it was almost like they came with black permanent markers, like they knew they were going to do this. Um, but one guy wrote, did you really think if you painted this wall white, we would stop writing? So apparently, this is some sort of ongoing inner war between the patrons and and the uh, the event holders here at IMS. So I found this really amusing. I, I thought it was really funny, and I, I wanted to share it with my father. So I went outside and I grabbed him from the cars. I said, "Hey, you got to come and see this." He's like, "What?" I said, "He's like, where?" And I said, "In the bathroom." He's like, in the bathroom? I'm like, yeah, yeah, come here a second. He's like, what? And I said, well, I, I just want to show you, you know, let's say a, a little Indianapolis tradition. <laughs> and he's like, you know, you know what? I, I'm really not into that. Uh, no, that's okay. I'm like, no, come here. Come and check it out. He's like, no, no, that's 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 cool. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll wait here. And I'm like, will you just come here? Come here! And he finally, you know, is convinced enough to walk into the bathroom with me, but, I mean, only, only to a certain point. He's, he looks uncomfortable, to say the least. We turn the corner, and I say, you see this? And, uh, you know, obviously my voice tends to travel a little more than most, so there are guys, you know, just kind of, <laughs> you know, doing their business, looking over their shoulder, like, who is this guy? But whatever. I say, you know, look at this. You see, Dad... All the people who have written on the wall. You see how this is, it almost seems like a tradition. See what this guy said? Do you really think we're going to keep, do you really think we're going to stop? He's like, oh, huh, how about that? I'm like, yeah, pretty cool, or pretty weird, huh? He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we walk out, and, uh, you know, I'm looking at him. I'm like, you know, what did you think I was trying to get you doing there? He's like, oh, I, I don't know. I don't know, whatever. And, uh, you know, I just had to let it lay there and move on. But, it, like, you know, reflecting back on him, like, what could he have possibly been thinking his son was going to, you know, expect him to do in the bathroom with him? Was this some sort of, you know, like, uh, what, what, did he, what was he thinking? How many bonding experiences can you have in the bathroom? I don't know. Maybe I should have just not brought it up, but... I had no idea he would react like that. And, I mean, maybe some of you people have some ideas in your head as to what, you know, people do in a bathroom that they shouldn't be doing in a bathroom. I'll leave that to you. But I, that was enough for me to be like, this is utterly weird, and I just need to move on. And that's the thing about hanging out with your family is, you know, awkward moments happen to each and every one of us all the time. But it always seems to be even more amplified if it's an awkward position between two family members. So there it is, uh, the little Indianapolis tradition. 
uh, that you may not know about. And uh, just to just on a side note, I did go this year because that was that was last year. But this year, I, I showed up at the bathroom again to see what was written, and it looked like uh, they weren't having it. The event holders smartened up, and they painted the wall black. So I think that tradition's pretty much snuffed out. And I don't. Again, I'm a newbie here. I don't know how long that that lasted, but I don't think they. I mean, maybe people are going to show up with bottles of whiteout next year. I, I don't know. So there you go. Um, let's move on. We're we're we got to get started. We got it. We we we've, we've reached our destination. The navigator has uh, just brought us down to Radiator Springs, and by, by down I mean we've actually tied the ship to hot air balloons to get it out to where we're going. Radiator Springs is actually. Uh, located in a desert, so it's not like we can sail down a river there, okay? So let's play uh, Cars for the PlayStation 2. It's a racing game, and it's a kid's game, but it's also an open-world experience, and that's why it's cool, because these kids' games that are open-world, they can be a lot of fun. They're, they don't, you know, they're not difficult, but they will take you to somewhere else. And that's what the Galleon's all about. Adventure and travel and seeing what's on the next horizon. So let's get started. Uh, PlayStation 2. I will, um, I will say one thing. There may be a couple load screens here. Um, they're not long, maybe 10, 15 seconds, but I don't want you just staring at a load screen. So as a result, uh, I, uh, just in case, I've got some Laffy Taffies with me, okay? And, uh, you know, there, there's, there's some jokes in the back, so... I don't know if we're going to use these, but I figured, you know, come prepared. If the game freezes, you know, we could always just do Laffy Taffy for 50 minutes. Okay? All right, let's get started. Let's make our way to the uh, back roads, hick town, if you will, of, uh, <laughs> of Radiator Springs. Okay, I'll give you guys a little audio. And we're right in it. Okay, this is uh, Lightning McQueen. Some of you may know this. You know, I gotta be honest. I really know little to nothing about this world, um, because I've never seen this movie. Okay, but when I heard that this was an open-world driving game set in, you know, a desert town, I was really taken aback, and I was really interested. But now I haven't explored much. I, I've driven around this town maybe once and done one race. But I haven't looked around too much. How's it, uh, how's it going? I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. Um, Sarge's su Surplus Hut. It's a shame it's closed. You know, these uh, open world games, there's usually some stuff that's unlocked out, you know, closed. And that may be what's happening here. But I love the 60s design of everything here. You know, the cozy cone motel. Oh. Oh my. And, you know, this is... We'll, we'll get to an event later, but let's take a look at the area here. Um, <laughs> this is cute. You know, they, they have little cones that the cars live in. Uh, it's certainly a chatty town. I have a feeling we're going to be hearing a lot of people talking. Um, th but they're driving around, and I say people, but obviously this is not a, a, a world where people, you know, are really prominent. It's more the cars. The cars have... Oh my goodness, hello. What's in Hi. here? Hi. Oh. What does it say? Fillmore's? Again, some of you are probably rolling your eyes. Like, of course it's Fillmore's. You know, we know that. Uh, I, I, I do not. Um, I, I don't know who Fillmore is, and it looks like he's not home. Oh, my goodness. Hello. Hi. If I were to guess, though, you know, I, I, know, how, I know how Cars works. I know how Pixar m movies work. I mean, I'm... I'm willing to bet maybe this guy's got a VW bus or something. Uh, but, you know, this is cool. This this makes you want to play the game. Because it's like, it's pretty obvious that something's going to happen here eventually. You're probably going to meet this Fillmore. And, uh, you know, who knows what he's going to need you to pick up. Well, if it isn't my best friend. <laughs> I don't know. Apparently they know me. I don't really know them. Budville Training Trading Complex, I think. Yeah, so you know, look at the look at the detail, the rust uh, on on the 
the uh, the gas pumps, the the really the signs for me really make it. Uh, the Glen Rio Motel, you know where what did this used to be? Now this guy I know, Tom Mater, uh, you know I never seen the show, never seen the movie again, but. M Mater is a character, he's the tow truck. You know, everybody kind of knows at least, if you have a television, you at least know Lightning McQueen is the, the main car. And uh, Mater is, uh, you know, his buddy, I guess, who was played by Larry the Cable Guy. I, You know, I don't want to go slamming Larry the Cable Guy. Uh, I'll leave that to the 10 million other peop angry people on the internet. What's in here? Can I actually open these? No. Uh, you know, anybody got a two-handed bastard sword? Got to open these boxes up. Uh, anybody knows Larry, Larry the Cable Guy? Not, not for me. You know. So here, this is where this is interesting, though. You know, we have all this open road, and that's when you realize, yeah, you know what? This is a racing game. You know, I'm going 120 miles per hour. Ooh, what, what did that say? Stop. I'm really interested in the signs. Here. What's this say? Welcome to Radiator Springs. So we're in the outskirts of town. I assume the other side here. I'm leaving so soon. Okay. Well, no, I'm not leaving. We'll go back. I want to see some more of the town here. Let's see. We started at uh, around 322. And it's around 338 now. So that's 18. And we want to be doing the booty segment in about seven minutes okay oh is this mater all right hold on a second let's see if larry the cable guy can make me laugh i need to talk to that sounded like two different voices who what oh it was him you know it doesn't sound like larry the cable guy maybe they didn't get him for this i don't know but this is i guess this is mater's joint come here what's it say here Radiator Springs, Curious, Rare Hubcaps. Oh, it's that. Okay, so there's a, there's a Model T there. I'm not that interested in talking to anybody yet. Really, what I'd like to do is um, we're gonna look at the town a little more, and then maybe we'll get into a race. Okay, because I would like to show you, you know, the at least you know how exciting the racing can be. I mean, it's pretty good. Uh, this was made by THQ, otherwise known as uh, Toy Headquarters. Uh, now defunct. Uh, they made their share of stinkers, but they made some good ones too. And I feel like this is a fine example of that. What is this? Is this the founder of the town? Hello. Old Model oh T. Let me see if we can turn around and. Because I know there's kind of a first person mode here. Let's, uh, let's see what this says. No, so not nothing. <laughs> okay. Oh, that was worth the trouble, wasn't it? Um. So yeah, I think this is a fine example of, of THQ's, you know, better, better projects. And they made, uh, they made the, t the, uh, the Saints Row series. Which, you know, that, that was basically a GTA clone, a Grand Theft Auto clone. So if you're going to make a Grand Theft Auto clone, hey, you, buddy. everybody wants to be my friend. Um, you know, you want to make it, uh... If you're gonna make a, a vehicle-driven game, you better make it a nice, clean vehicle. Now, this guy, I can I can tell he he's Cliff Clavin. Hey, ready to go racing? Yeah, I can tell. It's <laughs> can I go into him? I mean, I assume he's how I got here because he's my yeah he's my no I can't go in in him. All right, that's fine. Hey, can I get an autograph? Oh, so apparently people know me. I mean, I guess if I have my own truck, that's gonna happen. Again, I haven't seen the movie. I, I'm, I'm learning as I go here. That's probably a little irritating, and I apologize for that. But, but you know, that's the nice thing about these these games. Sometimes, especially an open world game, it's like a bet. It's like a different way to experience the world. Now, here's a race, and I think I'd really like to try it. So let's uh, let's go in. We've got a load screen here. Let's check out a Laffy Taffy. Uh, Tina from Raleigh, North Carolina asks, what did one casket say to the other casket? Thanks for... That you coughing? Get it? Oh, God, I'm, I'm late. I'm late. Thanks, Tina. You made me late. All right, so here we are. We're doing a race right, right through town. 
So we'll, we'll get uh, basically a, a little better lay of the land. Um, I'm really curious if this if this game in any way um, expands. You know, normally in, in most open world games you can go in a certain area, but there are other other places that are locked off until later. And there's some maneuvers you can do here. You can power slide. You can do a tilt, which, you know, is, is a little cartoony, but it is really effective. And, um... And you can do it. You can tell that there's a level of strategy with the racing. I also like that it's the the race. The racing is pretty organic. I'm able to figure out where I need to go on the track without being completely spoon fed. The the arrows, you know, they make sense in this kind of environment. But here we are. We're in the open road, and it's like you know, it almost feels like we're 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 driving in in, in like a street race. So this isn't too bad. Where are we at? Two laps? One more lap? I, I, I'm obviously, you know, dominating. I mean, I am Lightning McQueen. It, it would only make sense if I rolled into a, a little hick town like Radiator Springs here that we're going to be doing well. Uh, but I love the idea of being less combat and more a sport to advance through one of these open world games. And when I play Grand Theft Auto Vice City, one of my absolute favorite things to do, I don't know about you, was the street racing. And the great thing about that was you could you could pick any car in the game and bring it to a garage where there was underground street racing. And you could, you know, you could race an ice cream truck if you want, if you were silly enough to do that, uh, you know, or a, a, a motorcycle, whatever suited your, your style. Now, obviously, there's a little less flexibility here you know we've got a story driven situation here um, but it's still fun and uh, you know not not very combat heavy all right we're gonna get back to town I'll throw one more uh, I don't need to save no thank you uh, we'll throw one more riddle at you Annette from Duluth Minnesota what do you call Minnesota when it snows uh, Minnesota. Jeez. Minnesota. Uh, that's terrible, Annette. That that's comedy in Minnesota. Okay. All right. Uh, let's let's stop there for now. Uh, I, I I don't know where to go from there, Annette. <laughs> that was probably a mistake to even uh, bring Laffy Taffy into this whole uh. This whole shipwreck. <laughs> and sadly, there are more. All right. So here we are. Uh, we're halfway through the show thereabouts. Uh, and we're going to do the booty segment. Uh, you know, Cars is really cool. I'm actually excited to play it. Uh, maybe when, when we wrap the voyage a little more. I want to see what, what else is here. And racing, racing games are always fun, but it's neat to see them in this kind of hub world scenario. It reminds me a lot of... Uh, Diddy Kong Racing, a really good kart game in the N64 that, you know, makes you wonder why why get another kart game when you can get Mario 64? Well, there was a really neat open world to it as well, like a quest mode. So it kept you kept you going for the harder races. So this I'm actually very excited about uh, to play more of. But I'm also excited about this. This booty segment is crazy, okay? There's a lot to go through. Uh, let's see. Whew. I'm going to try and do this in 10 minutes, but I, I don't know. We'll see. If we go over, we go over. That's just how it's going to go. Okay? This is a pirate ship. We we don't have to worry about time, all right? Okay. So I walked into one place, uh, one establishment that I, I know and I've been to before, and this guy is always trying to, to, to empty this basket, okay? He's got a basket full of controllers, and most of them are broken, but he's always trying to lower the price to get them out. He says if he says he, if he can't sell them, he can't put new stuff in. That's his. He's trying to you know get me that way, okay? But I'm not biting. In fact, I believe he offered them for a dollar each. Yeah, I think it was a dollar each when I walked in. I'm like, eh, no thank you. But in the counter, he had a small little 
CD case. You know, you, you think of those CD books? Well, this one was really little. And that's a good sign, because that means there's probably GameCube games in there. So I asked him to, if I can see it, and he's like, yeah, go ahead. And I he pulls it out for me, and I'm looking through, and my, uh, I'm keeping my poker face, but we're in good shape. And I look up, and I say, okay, how much? He said, well, I'm going to have to do two bucks each on every disc. I'm like, okay. So I pull out the ones that I want. No case. No cases for these. So that's why they're wrapped up in this plastic. This is the best way he could give them to me so I could travel with them. Uh, but, oh, man. <laughs> Heavy hitters, okay? So first of all, we have a, a launch game for the GameCube. There have only been two of these. Luigi's Mansion for the GameCube, and then the recently they made a sequel for uh, the 3DS. I've never played this guy. This was the only time that, that Nintendo ever launched a system where they launched it with a Luigi game and not a Mario game. There aren't a lot of Luigi games here. I hear this is great, and, you know, Halloween's coming up. Maybe it's time I finally give it a shot. But I know it's about ghost busting, okay? I believe you have a vacuum cleaner. And you're, you're going from room to room in this house looking for Mario and cleaning the house of its uh, various apparitions and hauntings. Uh, not a bad one. I hear it's pretty good. Let me uh, unwrap a little more here. And we have Star Fox Adventures. Now, I will say that these are a little beat up. Star Fox Adventures, I don't know if you can tell, but there's some scratches here. That doesn't mean they can't be fixed, and if you're talking two dollars a game, if, if it's the right game, you're still in really good shape, okay? So Star Fox Adventures, uh, not really looked at as a fine title. I haven't played it. Um, it's like a 3D environment on foot on an alien planet, which is, I think, why people didn't like it very much, because Star Fox is supposed to be about being a fox who pilots a spaceship, an, an X-Wing of sorts, through the galaxy, uh, saving planets from oppression and um, evil rule, okay? And then all of a sudden, they, uh, Star Fox loses his ship. So, I don't know. And it's made by Rare. Uh, they've made some good stuff, but I think this is kind of the beginning of the end for Rare. Uh, whatever. I grabbed it because of Star Fox, you know. I don't really plan on playing that one, though. Uh, we got Double Dash, which we have, but it's always good to track down a, a, a Mario Kart game, either for a gift or a trade. Uh, could definitely use a little love. But, you know, e even these ones that are really scratched on a GameCube, there's something about the GameCube. They really built those things quality. Uh, I don't know if the laser is, is superior to the PlayStation 2, but I've noticed that most GameCube games can really take a beating and still run well. And even if it can't, modern technology these days, it's, it's, it's relatively easy to go into a used game store and get these fixed for a couple bucks. So I grabbed it. Mario Kart Double Dash. Um, again, these were all, you know, he was asking two bucks each on these. Pokemon Coliseum I've actually been looking for for a while. Uh, it's funny, I, I had this game complete in the case with the manual and I, I, I found it with a couple other games, but I was really s spending more doubloon than I should. So if that happens, I usually like to sell one of the games to, you know, to, to kind of, especially if it's a double, to w soften the blow, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. But I don't have this game. I just figured I wasn't going to really play it, So I'd ho but it's popular enough that I figured maybe one day I'd find the disc. So I sold the disc only and I kept the case in the manual and that was maybe a year ago. So here we are. Now we've got it complete. So, you know, it's patience paid off. Don't be afraid to sell something you know you're not going to play. If it's going to put that money back in your pocket, you can't be spending on everything all the time. Even if it's a good deal. Sometimes there are great deals all the time. Okay? And, and if you're going to find great deals all the time, you need to make sure that somehow that money's going to get back in your pocket eventually. Okay, so there we go. Uh, that was I was happy to find that one. And then finally, this is really cool. 
This is uh, the Legend of Zelda Collector's Edition, okay? And basically, this was, uh, I believe, a pre-order title for the Wind Waker. If you pre-ordered the Wind Waker, you would get this with it. Uh, don't quote me on that, because there's another disc. There's three three Zelda compilations. There's two Zelda compilations of GameCube. It gets a little hairy. I'm relatively sure if this is, if you pre-ordered, you got this. And what's great about this, the, this disc here is it's got four excellent Zelda games on it. It's got the original Legend of Zelda for the Nintendo Entertainment System, one that started it all. It's got the sequel, The Legend of Link, Zelda 2. It's got the Ocarina of Time, which in my opinion is the best Zelda game uh, I've ever played. And I've played quite a few of them. Not every one, but quite a few. And then finally it has uh, Majora's Mask, which is very popular these days. So you're getting four very, very premium Zelda games on one disc here. And this disc is, is certainly sought after, to say the least. So, they were all two bucks. I can't believe how far behind I am. I also grabbed a few uh, PlayStation 2 games there on the rack. Uh, again, for $2 each. Not the best titles. What do we have? Blitz the League. Beautiful Joe. EverQuest Online Adventures, which, you know, this game... This game doesn't even play anymore. This was an online-only game that I, I played for a summer. I... What's the point of putting this in the hold? But I don't know. Maybe I like the, maybe I like the artwork. I do like the artwork a lot. That troll's pretty pretty cool. Um, whatever. Dead disc. So these were all two bucks each, and I said, okay. So yeah, I'll take all these. And he's like, I tell you what. I tell you what. You buy everything in the basket. If you buy everything in the basket. For a dime each. A dime, okay? All the games, the GameCube games, the PlayStation 2 games will do a buck fifty. Alright? So let's let's break that down. So we had four PlayStation 2 games and five GameCube games. So that that would have brought us to eighteen dollars. Okay, eighteen dollars to start. And now he's saying a buck fifty each. So let's look at that again. Because I actually haven't worked this out on my own, so I'm, I'm curious. So let's see. So that's six dollars here. Five the game five GameCube games, so that's twelve thirteen fifty. Okay? And if we had paid if we'd paid what it was initially, that would have been eighteen. So thirteen fifteen eighteen four fifty. We've got four fifty to work with, okay? before we're we're paying the same amount. So I said fine, let's let's roll the dice. Okay? I haven't looked in this bag. It's garbage. Garbage. Okay? I'm not I'm telling you, not good stuff. But it's a dime each. Honestly, I bought I took this out of here so that it would give me a better price on the games that we're putting in the hole. But let's see what's in here. We have, again, all these, everything in the bag here is a dime each. All right? We have a, a, an Xbox controller here. Okay? It's not, I do not believe this is first party. It, sure, it looks green, but I'm, this thing here, I mean, what is that? Uh, the cord is here, and there's no breakaway. Right. So these Xbox cords, these Xbox cords are, are dangerous cables are dangerous because you you could buy these used and they had this feature where you see that thing that notch there on a re regular Xbox controller if you, it was like a breakaway if your dog runs and if you're playing the Xbox and your dog runs in front of the TV it'll break that away and it won't it won't pull the port the the plug out of the, the console maybe knock the console off the table or something all right well it looks complete but Okay, then there's a ridiculous amount of fraying in the wire there. You see that? I don't know. I mean, maybe you can electrical tape that. You see that? Right here. Maybe you can electrical tape that. I don't know. I don't know. Looks broken to me. GameCube controller. Uh, third party, made by Mad Cats. Uh, a quick check here. Ugh. <laughs> you see that? Broken button, 
But it's an additional button. I think it's a second Z button. That's not on a regular GameCube controller. So, for all intents and purposes, this guy may work. I, I don't know. I have no idea. So that's a dime. We're up to three set 1370. Okay? 1370. Uh, a PlayStation 2 wireless controller with no um, no receiver. Useless. Okay. This is gonna be an absolute mess. Uh, that's 13 1380. I think we're gonna be alright. Um, this is a wireless third party after aftermarket Xbox original Xbox controller. Um, the design isn't that bad, but again, there's no receiver. Useless. Another third party original Xbox controller. Uh, it looks intact. And I'm not seeing any breaks here. Looks pretty good. This may this may be workable. Okay. Uh, an actual officially licensed Xbox controller, but uh, it's missing the breakaway. You know this. This is how an Xbox plug looks. Okay, that's what you're gonna need to plug it into the system. This, right there. That's how a breakaway plug is uh, cord is gonna look if the plug is gone, okay? Ba basically making this thing useless as it stands. If you have an extra breakaway, you can use that. Um, this thing is not usable. It's usable, but why would you? Uh, look at the analog sticks. I mean, they are just an absolute mess. Uh, more garbage, 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 garbage. Uh, we are so over in time. Okay, that's all right. Uh, what's this? We got uh, a huge Xbox controller. This is the first one they ever had. I don't have many of these. So I'm actually kind of excited about this. And it seems like it's okay. Yeah. I'm not... Uh, the, cord, the cord looks all right. Uh, there is no breakaway. So we're going to... But that's replaceable. And we don't have a lot of these. And I... This, this guy... This... I mean, look at how big it is. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, a, it's a very big controller. They got a lot of heat for that, but I actually don't have a problem. I was, I was kind of like this, so it's cool. And I, I don't have, I don't, I don't know if we have any of these in the hold. Maybe one or two. I don't know. Um, and then finally, one more wireless Xbox controller with weird shoulder variants on the top. Uh, okay, so there you go. Uh, let's count it up. So we were at 13.50. We, we were going to be at 18, but then he struck this deal with us. So we're at 1350. We're going to count up the controllers and see where we are. So 1360, 1370, 1380, 1390, 14, <laughs> 1510, 1520. Don't use the PlayStation 2 controller. We need that to play cars. And 1430. So 1430. So he knocked a few bucks off. And we got a whole bag of crap. Okay, uh, this isn't that great, but it's always fun to you know have some random stuff to to dig through. So there you go. Um, who knows? Maybe he'll put something really cool in the basket next time we we sail that way. So there you go. Uh, we we have some more. I man, we're we're over, but these are too cool to pass. Um, I went into another place and I saw this. Star Trek Shattered Universe for a buck. Um, this is in no way an uncommon game or probably even an in-demand game, and I'm a Star Trek sucker. So if I see one cheap, I'm going to grab it. This was a buck. And I'm going to... This this pond, this place I was going to, by the way, is kind of like the Moss Eisley of the waters that I tend to sail. There, there's just... All kinds of weird characters showing up at this joint. You know, people screaming negotiations at each other. A real hub of commerce. I really like it. I, I really like this place as, because of that. Because you, you literally can't scream at each other. Negotiations. Uh, it's just such so much passion there. You know, it's so it, it's not it's not sterilized. It's not clinical. It's very 
homespun in that regard. So as a result, I've been there before, and um, the the main proprietor, the owner, uh, you know, is kind of like, <laughs> you know, it kind of reminds me of Watto from uh, Episode One Star Trek. You know, just the the wheeler and dealer. Not 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 that he's corrupt or anything, but you know, he's the, you know, he's a businessman. Um, he says, Neil, do you have a Super Nintendo controller? Raz, do you have a Super Nintendo controller? And I said, well, yeah, yeah, we, we have some in the hold. And he's like, I need one, okay? I, I got this Super Nintendo, but I need a controller to go with it. I said, okay, uh, well, what do you want to do? Uh, and I think I said, yeah, sure, I'll give it to you. And he's like, when? I said, I don't know, three days? He's like, uh, I'm like, okay, well, I, you know, I'll just give it to you. It's not a big deal, because this guy's, this guy's worked with me. You know, we have a relationship, so... I, we have enough in the hold where we can, somebody's looking for something who's in an advantageous position, you usually want to make that olive branch. Even if you have to give something up. Think about that. I, you know, we're, we're in a situation where we're in a business and I'm offering something to him. Okay? You may be like, that's not piracy. Okay? What are you doing? Trust me, it's the right move down the line to do something like this, especially if you have such a surplus of Super Nintendo controllers, which, you know, we're fine on Super Nintendo controllers, okay? And so he says, you got to see this. So he runs in the back, and he comes back, and he's like, see, this is what, this is what came with the Super Nintendo. Now, for reference, point of reference, this is not part of the sale, so don't get confused, but I want to show you what a Super Nintendo controller looks like, okay? Your typical, you know, 16-bit era stuff, all right? You got your D-pad here, you got your buttons, a couple shoulder buttons, okay? So that's Super Nintendo controller. This is what he's looking for. This is what I'm offering to him, okay? He's like, you gotta see what came with this uh, Super Nintendo. And he shows me this. The Turbo Touch 360, okay? It's not a broken controller. This is how it's designed. The D-pad, it senses where... <laughs> senses where your finger is. I've, I've heard some reviewers say uh, they use magic to sense where your thumb is, but there you go. So it's this weird novelty of playing a Super, a super Nintendo game without a directional pad, and I didn't have one of these. So I'm like, oh, that's cool. How about we trade? And he's like, how about two Super Nintendo controllers? So I'm like, you want two, you want two first-party Super Nintendo controllers for this thing? And he's like, ah! You know, he's, he's laughing at me. And he goes back, and I, I, you know, I go back to line to ring up for Star Trek Universe... I'm like, okay, the deal's done. He shows back up to me. You know, because I wasn't going to do that. I wasn't going to do that. I was nice enough. I said, I'll, I said, hey, I, look, I'll give you one to be nice, just to be nice. Okay? But he walked off. I'm like, all right, well, I guess the deal's done. I go up to the counter to ring this up, and he shows back up to ring me up, and he's like, I'll tell you what. You take this. You take this. Go home. Bring me back a Super Nintendo controller. We'll call it a deal. And there you go. What has happened here? Okay? What's happened? I offered to him... I'm not going to get the Super Nintendo controller. But I offered to him something. Something he needed. Okay? For nothing. And I let it ride. And in the same day, I get a controller I've never heard of before. Well, no, I've heard of it. But I don't have... We've got enough regular Super Nintendo controllers, and arguably, Super Nintendo controllers are better than this. But if you have enough, this is an interesting novelty. Okay, so we get this. We get a game that we wanted. And all we had to do was make a trade for one controller. Okay? And that trade would have never happened had I said, I'll trade you that for this. Okay? The tr it, it was, it was the, the fact that I gave an olive branch... And said, I'll just give it to you to be nice. And, you know, was willing to let it lie there that he came back and made a deal that was pretty sweet. Okay? I'd say it's a pretty even trade, but it wasn't a trade to start. It was a gift that turned into a trade. So think about that one. Okay? That's not going to happen every day. We are so over, and I am sorry... But we're going to do this one anyway. There's one left, and it's really good. It's really good. So I walk into one last place, and um, they, I see a stack 
of 3DS games behind the counter, and I'd say, what's with the 3DS games? And he's like, oh, he puts down a stack of, of sealed games, and they were two different titles. There was Steel Diver, and then there was Pilot Wings Resort, okay? And I said, what are you doing on the 3DS games? And I'm like, oh, they're sealed. I mean, they're brand new, okay? I don't know if you can see the, the cellophane there, but this is a brand new game. He's like, what are you doing on these? And I, he's like, uh, I'm like, why Why do you have so many of the same title in RLC? And he's like, I don't know, maybe they were stolen. You know, <laughs> you know what waters am I rolling through to make a deal here? I, I don't to tell you, but that was what he said. You know, who knows? He's, he's joking, obviously. I'm sure this isn't stolen, but it's always weird. You know, there's, there's surpluses. People work in, in game development, and sometimes they have stuff in the garage like this, and they get rid of it. So, you know, it's it's always weird. But he was doing six on this, and I just recently got a 3DS. Um, so six bucks for a sealed game that's a good title, Nintendo title. I figured it would be good. Not a crazy deal, but what was a crazy deal was what I saw on the rack. Now, I came in, and I know this place. They had, like, a Tupperware full of games, old games, like 360 Wii games and really bad stuff like Brock Band and stuff sitting in a big tub at the end of the counter. And I'd, I've been through it in previous voyages. But there was this one guy who looked a little scummy. Looked like he'd been through a couple of uh, couple of nights of, uh, you know, drinking rum. <laughs> Woke up on the wrong side of the uh, the village. He's, he's walking around. He makes his way over to this Tupperware. And I notice if the Tupperware's here... And the counter is behind the counter, up on a shelf. I see S Nintendo 64 games, okay? And I see them. I see them like this, okay? Where I can't see what the labels are. I think there was a sports game in the front, but who knows? But you know, you see that gold, and you know what that means, okay? Now, there was a lady who I really don't deal with dealing, doing the counter, and I try to avoid her. I don't know why. I, I, I work better with some of the other people there. But this guy was over here. This this guy who had too much rum was sifting through the Tupperware Xbox games, and he looked like the kind of guy who's like me, who's looking for any kind of deal. And so he's here, and I'm over there waiting my turn and these N64 games are right above him, like he hasn't seen them yet. So, I, I take the initiative, and I say to her, Hey, can I grab those N64 games that are up on the rack? And this guy here is N64, and he starts following me with his eyes as I grab them, because she can't reach them. I'll let me get these for you. Because, uh, you know, let me get these for you. I bring them down to the counter. <laughs> and here they are. Uh, by this time, uh, the manager had shown up, and he recognized old Pirate Raz. And he did these for me for a very good deal. Uh, and here they are. We have Vigilante 8, Second Offense, uh... Ready to rumble boxing. And uh, <laughs> we've got Goldeneye here. And then the hologram label Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. Uh, there were some other sports games that I didn't want. He, the, the, the guy who had too much rum, jumps on those, especially after seeing Majora. Seeing me get Majora, he's watching the whole six scenario. He asks how much the wrestling games are, and the proprietor says two bucks each. But then when he's ringing me up, he's like, "We didn't pay much for these. We know you. We can do these for fifty cents each." So, yes, that's right. Majora's Mask, fifty cents each. We have two. Copies. Where'd uh, where'd Zelda go here? It's here, isn't it? So that's the last one, yeah. So we've got two copies of Majora's Mask. 
in addition to a whole bunch of other Zeldas for $2. Wow. Wow. So there you go. Uh, pretty, pretty crazy, uh, pretty crazy time out there. I have no idea how, how over we are. I think we're, we've got to be like 25 uh, minutes over. I don't care. We're going to keep going. Um, so here we go. We're going to get back to um, cars for the PlayStation 2. <laughs> we're going to ride around at Radiator Springs a little more. And then we're going to do the mailbag segment. And we're going to wrap up. Okay? So, here we go. I'm putting these on a little early. Let me get out to Harper Transition. Let's get in a couple more races. Get a couple more laughs going. Let's get some of this music going. Oh, yeah. By the way, I, I don't have the music running for this. And it's because uh, it's, uh, you know, he's singing. Um, it's because there there's there's a real licensed soundtrack to this game. So I had to turn it off. I don't want to get, you know, I don't want to get the uh, the Ed, Ed Winter group or Los Lobos legal team on me. Just to get a song out. But I don't think you need it. Um, oh yeah, hold on a second. There's a little landmark here that I want to point out to oh, you guys. And uh, th this is always my favorite part, is observing the, the landmarks. Let's see what we got here. So we have the world's largest devil rope. I always, I find it strange Hello. that it's called How the devil you? rope. But, you know, there it is. I think it's barbed wire. Is devil rope like a southern term? I, I, I don't know what that is. Um... Uh, but, you know, I, I wonder how long this game is. I, I'm guessing not long. You know, these games, these old kids open world games usually around 10, 15 hours. But that's a good 10, 15 hours in my book. Any time where you can explore you somewhere, you're, you don't get to go on a daily basis. A little rotted out town like this, especially as a car, um, that's, that's totally up my alley. I, I want to get into another race here, I think. What's uh no that was that was the race we already did. It, it looks like there's only a couple events going on. I don't I, I'm not sure that I want to try any of these events because I feel like it's going to be cutscene land. What's this? Oh, cool. We can design our car. Let's check this out. Oh, okay, hold on. I'll get another riddle out here. Uh Matthew uh from Mississippi, what is a vampire's favorite food? Nectarines. Wow, they just get worse and worse. Nectarines. Oh, this is cool. These are kind of ugly. <laughs> These are kind of ugly, but I'm going to go with one just for fun. All right, there we go. Nectarines. Yeah, thanks for nothing. What do we got here? Uh, no, I'm, okay, we're good. Ugh, that is not pretty. That is not pretty in the slightest. Oh, nice to be me. I've never been that into uh, the NASCAR colors, you know, NASCAR painting. Sorry. How are you? Thank you. No, I'm fine. That is, excuse me. I kind of wish there was a little more going on here. This is probably a race. A proposal for you, young sir. Yeah, Radiator Cab Crump. Let's do it. Why not? Last race was pretty cool. Let's get another riddle here. Uh, Caitlin from uh, Texas. What time was it? When the elephant sat on a car, I'm not going to get in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, let's just get in the race. What time was it when the elephant sat on a car? Uh, time to get a new chair. Oh, a new chair. I totally blew it. Sorry, Katie. What time is it when an elephant sat on a chair? Time to get a new chair. I've heard that one, Katie. You're not doing much. All right, here we go. All right, well, we're going to do one more race, and then we did go way over on on uh, the mailbag, or uh, on uh, the booty segment, so we'll go to the mailbag next. Um, there, You know, I have a feeling there's more to this once you unlock, and I haven't, you know, poo on me, but I wanted to experience Radiator Springs together as a crew. 
But I have to say, this is definitely one that I, I want to spend some more time with. And I like that green car. I like that boxy car. I don't know about you guys, but I'm into the boxy stuff. I, um... Whoa, 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 hey now. Lots of green cars here. I've shamed my family. <laughs> I've shamed my family. What's the problem? It's just a race, man. You're all right. Oh, God, it's the first lap, and I'm already beating these guys. I wish that it was a little more challenging, but again, this is kind of the starter races here. I shouldn't fault it. I have a feeling that this game can probably get a little more challenging. And, uh, you know, I eventually want to give it a shot. And, uh, you know, I would urge you to pick it up. Um, oh, it's, uh, sorry. I would urge you to pick this one up if... If you have a GameCube, if you have a PlayStation 2, if you have an original Xbox, these are avail this is available on all of those. I'm going to say I'd probably recommend the GameCube one the most. This is the PlayStation 2 version. It's the one I happen to have and the one we, you know, we, we can, we've got the PlayStation 3 hooked up to the Navigator, so we've got access. We, we don't have a, a GameCube hooked up to the Navigator here on the Galleon yet. So I, I chose to go with this one just because I was really in the mood to play it. But I would recommend the GameCube version to you. Um, for whatever reason, GameCube seems to load up games faster. And I think that's really it. Now, the, the, the load times have not been that bad here. You know, maybe if you get this version, just grab some Laffy Taffies also. Um, and you may be square. But... Uh, uh, you know, I, I would go with any version. If you're okay with, with a little downgrade in graphics, I don't have a problem with these graphics. I think they're cute and colorful. And if you're into racers. So, whoa. whoa. Is he, uh, this might be, this might be a, a little bit of a nail biter. There's a whole other lap left, though. And it kind of bothers me that this is the same track. This really leads me to believe, whoa, it's changing. Wow, so the, the, the route changed. That's pretty cool. It makes me think that there's probably definitely going to be some other areas to explore here. I mean, this guy is a race car, Lightning McQueen, so it would make sense that that he eventually gets to race against his, you know, like competitors. Is that right? I don't know, the other NASCARs, you know what I'm saying? You can't always be hanging out in Radiator Springs, right? I I'm a little worried. You know, I was I was trashing this at first, but this guy really is on my on my tail. And uh, I certainly want to win. And I think we got it. We, we got to be pretty close. I know there's things like boosting involved in this game too, but I I believe. Probably we haven't unlocked it yet, because I, I can't do it. But the, the, the configuration said there was boosting. Uh, there's obviously that interesting little tilt function. There's power sliding, although I don't really think the power sliding is that effective. And we've made it! Okay, great. Not bad. Alright, cool! So there we are. Um, that's a... Uh, let's get out of this. One more, one more Laffy Taffy for the road. No, I don't, I don't need to save. This is from Elizabethtown, Kentucky. How do you know when the moon is going broke? Uh, when it is down to a quarter. <laughs> That's terrible. It's terrible. There's, I don't know how Laffy Taffy's still in business. Sorry, guys. I mean, I, I, I'm sure... I'm sure LB from Elizabethtown, Kentucky is not working for you, but, you know... Uh, that's another question. Who's um, who's taking the time to write Laffy Taffy? Do you think they just have... Because that's an old candy. Do you think they just have a backlog of, you know, bad jokes from the past 20, 30 years or something? I, I, I don't know. I should look into it. Is there, a, like, a, a Laffy Taff, Taffy mobile app where they just have every bad joke that, that Laffy Taffy ever had? I don't know. So that was Cars, um, Cars for the PlayStation 2, a game that we probably didn't get to see enough of. 
I was a little disappointed with the, the, the amount of interactivity that I saw there. Um, this is a, a live production, so I had to be careful about cutscenes. So there were a couple of events there that I probably passed on that, that might have shown a little more variety. I think what's important here, though, is we saw the racing and that it was solid. It looks like a solid racer with a cool open world experience on top of it. And I would recommend this to someone who's never seen the movie. Because I haven't. And I was still interested enough to not... This wasn't one I just found on a shelf. I literally had been looking for this one before I, I received it. Because I an open world racing game that's made well you don't see often. So I was excited about it. Um, and I definitely want to check out more of Cars. And I would urge you to, too. Okay, we're wrapping up here. Um, we're about ready to sail back to the, the seas. But before we do, here it is, our mailbag segment. Okay, let's see what we got in here today. We got uh, some paper plates. Uh, Plastic Man, the complete series. Small cartoon show. Uh, Pitfall 2 for the uh, Atari 2600. Uh, an old Cure album. And here we go. Okay, I got it. Got a letter. Okay, so this one what is it? it says uh, to the French Revolution, one of uh, my loyal compatriots here on the YNL staff, he asked me this question. Uh, how many hours have you spent, Cap and Raz, playing your favorite system? I have no idea. I have no, I mean, how would you even gauge that? I don't think anyone would know that. I don't even think in a modern system you could look and check to see how many hours. I have no clue. Um, but I will say that my favorite system has got to be the Nintendo Entertainment System, the original Nintendo Entertainment System. And I think the reason for that, obviously a lot of that would be nostalgia. I grew up during that time. That was the first uh, system that I ever really identified with. I'd play some Atari, and I'd played a lot arcade games. Um, I, I spent time in arcades, but it wasn't until the Nintendo that games really had definitive endings, and it felt like you could beat a game. And that was really the system that made me, you know, the old sea dog I am today. Uh, who really made the system that really made me appreciate games because it, it brought in that sense of accomplishment. I like arcade games, and I like Atari games now. But at the time, they felt like acts of futility. They felt like the, all, the more time you put in, the faster the game got and the harder it got. And score for me as a child didn't matter. Okay, I just wanted to have fun. So when Super Mario Brothers and Zelda came out, and Mega Man 2, and they started having these goals, these brass rings that you could grab for, that's when I reached the point of no return. So I would easily say the, the Nintendo Entertainment System is my absolute favorite. Um, and I, I would suggest to you to try some of those older games on your, your virtual console, if you will. Uh, or try and get lucky. Try and sail those seas. Try and, um, you know, dig in those mysterious-looking piles of sand for a little treasure and find a Nintendo Entertainment System of your own. So thank you, French Revolution. Thank you for taking the time to uh, send me a question. If you out there would like to send a question to the Gaming Galleon, you can write it to gaminggalleon at gmail.com. You can tweet it to Yesterday Night Live. Uh, I'm sorry. You can tweet it to Yesterday Night L. Or you can leave it as a comment or a question or a message to any one of our productions here at Yesterday Night Live especially on the YouTube channel yesterday night live uh, if you send it up, put it on someone else's production and say can you get this to cap and Rez? can you get my message can you speed it to the gaming galleon I I'm, I'm quite certain it will reach us but there you go um, that's how to get a hold of us and and you may very well be next question in the mailbag uh, so that's it I, I think we had a lot of fun today cars was a lot of fun um, we learned a lot about giving kids games a chance uh we learned that it's pr maybe not a good idea to ask your father to go in the bathroom with you even if it's for the most wholesome of reasons and 
we especially learned that it's okay to give a little because you may get a little okay all right so thanks for coming thanks for sailing with old captain reyes and until then till next time i should say farewell and adieu to ye spanish ladies farewell and adieu ye ladies of spain for we received orders for to sail back to Radiator Springs. Oh man, that's got a ring to it. And lo, nevermore shall we see ye again. Oh my God. I know I'm being a slob, but I, an hour of talking. I had to put a cup in here. I had to put a cup in here. Patty the Swallow cracked the bottom. So, what are you going to do? There's always a plan B, right? Keep your powder dry, mateys.